but what's what's very common is struggling to get these birds to to flush uh, particularly if you're hunting in some of these controlled pheasant sites um, birds will be reluctant to flush but also again if you're really high quality habitat areas if you're not hunting with a dog or if you're hunting with a dog that's maybe you know not as well trained or not as well um, kind of you know scented it, it's going to make it a little bit tougher and so it, you might struggle to get these birds to, to flush and so there's a few strategies that I wanted to highlight that that can help get these birds to, to flush and help you find more birds. Um, the first one is don't stop short. The second is pause. So incrementally walking through the field. Um, strategy three is zigzagging through the field. And each of these strategies will have kind of a, a quick illustration and a slide on. But um, strategy four is to, to work the cover and hunt small patches. So don't just focus on you know, the, the big open grass in front of you, think about some of the higher quality areas of habitat that may be in that big open grassland. Also slow your pace. And most importantly, watch for runners. Um, like I mentioned, flushing is kind of a last resort for a lot of these birds. And so it's very common to see pheasants and quail kind of running um, ahead of you. And so you wanna watch for, for those birds. So strategy one is don't stop short. So make, I know this, this seems fairly obvious, um, but as you get out in the field, it, it's very common to just get, you know, within 15 yards of the end and say, okay, let's go ahead and rotate around. But as I mentioned, flushing is kind of that last resort for the birds. And so very commonly, they're just going to slowly either walk or run ahead of you um, until they get to kind of the edge of that, that field or the edge of the habitat that's there. So working all the way up to the edge very oftentimes there's gonna be lots of birds kind of tucked in that, that very end of the field. Um, I had, I've had several hunts where the only birds that I kicked up, you know, that, that specific day were in the last, you know, 10 feet of, of that field. And again, that's just because these birds are just slowly walking or running um, away from us as hunters instead of flushing up. So make sure that you kind of hunt that entire field and don't stop short. Another really useful strategy, um, and th this is something I, I do even if I'm not, you know, struggling to, to get birds up in the air, it's to, to pause and to, to hunt incrementally. Birds will often hold tight when they hear hunters kind of moving at, at a steady, consistent pace, um, especially on some of these more pressured public sites um, that, that, that get a lot of pressure. These birds start to pick up on kind of the nuances of hunters, that a lot of hunters are just going to walk at a consistent pace. And it doesn't really give them that, that feeling of actually being, you know, stalked or being hunted. Um, and again, they probably don't view us as, as, you know, oh, we're out there hunters, but as being as predated. And so these irregular intervals and kind of, you know, remaining silent for, for several seconds, a lot of times that can finally make that, that reluctant bird, he may just all of a sudden flush when you just kind of stop silent. He may think he's been seen. And so having these kind of irregular inconsistent movements and pauses um, is, is a great strategy um, when you're when you're upland hunting. Now arguably my favorite strategy when I'm hunting a field is to work in a zigzag pattern. Now this is again goes back to the the, the safety briefing we had um, a little bit ago is that when you're doing a zigzag pattern you really need to be on your your a game um, with your safety. You need to always be looking left and right and making sure you're in kind of a, a safe line and no one's kind of straggling behind or getting in front of other hunters. But the zigzag patterns is really good for not only A, covering a lot of habitat, but also it again breaks up that, that normal consistent, you know, walking path that, that these birds have, have seen over and over again. And it kind of, again, makes them think they're being stalked. They're seeing this irregular pattern, there's pauses. And so being, you know, working in a zigzag pattern is really advantageous um, to, to upland hunting. And this is one of the, I think the, the more important, I think one of the overlooked aspects of, of upland hunting is focusing on the, the cover and hunting the, the small patches. And so maybe you're hunting, you know, a 640 acre grassland field. Well, if it's just all kind of this, mo you know, this monoculture of just even grasses, if there's an isolated pocket of either shrubs or, or other thickets and woody growth, those areas very oftentimes will hold birds. And so a lot of times I'm looking for habitat differences. If, if you just look out there and everything's consistent, look for where those differences are. Uh, maybe there's a shallow dip in a field that, that tends to hold a little bit water. 
chances are that's going to impact the vegetation that's growing in that specific area as well. And so these are the kind of things I'm looking at when I'm going through the process of, okay, how am I going to hunt this field? Is just looking for those, those essentially outliers in that field um, can, can be really advantageous. And also slow down your pace. Um, I know when I first started pheasant hunting and, and upland hunting as a kid, we, you know, you always see these birds running ahead of you. And your first instinct is, well, if they're running ahead of me, I need to move faster to catch up to them. But very often when you're moving faster, all you're going to do is either cause those birds to continue running or they're just going to simply freeze and let you walk right by. And so work at a, at a reasonable slow pace. You don't need to do a, a brisk kind of fast walk, just do a normal slow walk pace again. Pausing and having these irregular intervals um, can, can cause those birds to, to feel threatened. Um, again, because they feel extremely safe in that specific area. I, I like to relate it to deer hunting. So if, if you're you know, walking through maybe a real thick area where you expect a buck to be bedded, if that buck feels safe in his bed, he will let you walk within five feet of him before he finally takes off. At the, the point of no return is where it, he's finally made that decision like, okay, I feel like I'm, I've been caught, I've been noticed, it's time to escape. And so the birds are that, that same way. So if they're very secure in that specific area, just kind of adjusting your pace essentially makes them think, oh, they found me. And that can oftentimes cause a flush as well. And the last strategy and something to, to really pay attention to is, is runners, uh, particularly with pheasants. Um, pheasants are notorious for just running ahead and trying to evade hunters without flushing. Um, and if you do see this, that's kind of a good indication that either you need to rethink your wind direction, you need to maybe rethink how you're hunting that field, and probably you need to slow your pace down a little bit as well. Um, but when you do see the, these pheasants kind of take off running ahead of you, note where they're going to, because chances are they're going to an area that has that, that heavy cover that we discussed earlier. Um, that, that's again, an area they feel safe and secure. And so when they're running in these grasslands, typically that's where they're gonna be running is to find that these areas of, of heavy cover where they can kind of hunker down and feel safe. And so note where that, that cover is, and then after a few minutes, kind of continue hunting the field towards that area, but then make sure to push through that heavy cover and, and to hunt that heavy cover. And chances are um, you'll, you'll, you'll find that bird in there. But again, when you do kind of reposition yourself to, to hunt that cover, you want to make sure that the wind direction is blowing from the bird to you so that you can kind of have that, that stealthier approach without all your scent, all your, your sound blowing straight to the, straight to the bird.